Okay, so the first thing uh, we're going to cover is um, just a review from last week, which or two weeks ago, which was uh, the sink and circle. Um, what that looks like from down the line with a few players, they really every one of them does it. But um, and then remember the most important thing is when I demonstrate the the circle, as you saw last week. That's not that's only for training and it would not be uh, used as a swing thought. And most of the things we're covering through the winter aren't really swing thoughts. They're more things you do without a ball, uh, you do at home. Um, you wouldn't be trying to put them on the golf course and so forth. They just, you train it so it just becomes kind of who you are and um, instead of trying to force it in and make it this, you know, swing thought and so forth. But um, <clears throat> the first thing, so I'm looking at Justin Rose down the line here. It means we're from the, the back view. And what you'll see as he goes to the top, you'll see where he starts to sink with his body. If you look here close enough, he'll sink with his body down, and he circles to where what we talked about last week, where everything's squared away. All right. Um, from here, uh, tonight is where we would follow up with that, and we're going to be talking about the delivery from here. And so from here, it's just all delivery. So even though you see, I'm going to back this up one more time. Let him go to the top. And right before, right in this area is where he's going to start to sink his body. He'll start to circle. And again, that's trained. The circle in there is trained. And amateurs need to train for that. Again, it's not a swing thought. If you try to put a circle in your in your whole body, and that, when I say circle, that's the, that's the entire body. So that's not just, um, and everything is always going to be the entire body. So that's, this is circling, this is circling this is circling, this is circling. Everything is circling. So it's one one action which makes it uh, obviously a lot easier. If you try to separate those movements, and, and a lot of times you'll hear in the golf world those movements are, you know, separation and so forth. You've got to be really, really careful with that. Um, you train separation, you'll get it, and if you are separated between the hips, shoulders, and arms, you'll have a uh, out-of-sync golf swing. So uh, using your whole body as, as a connection is, is really the key to what we do and what our goal is for every player. Um, so when you do this, just remember it's a sink and circle, but the circle is, sinking is something that you can use as a swing thought, not squatting. There's a huge difference, and I've explained that in the last video, and I'll cover it uh, on the follow-up video on this as well, because you do not want to squat down, um, and you and you, uh, you certainly don't, you, you can think of sinking in transition and slowing down as a swing thought, and a lot of players on the tour use that as a thought, slowing down in transition, and then just going from there. Because, there, again, this part where you see has, where he circles with the body, uh, that's already built in. It's not a swing thought. I'm going to show you that. So, uh, look at a couple other players here. So, here's Henrik Stenson. You're going to see this again. Different style of swing. Uh, using three different players tonight. Spieth, uh, Stenson, and Rose. Top three you know, ball strikers in the game. You'll start to see he's already sunk, he's started to sink with his body. Here's the circle, and that's it. And the guys that do it best, they can deliver the club from a longer or wider area. So they have better distal, distal end speed here. So um, so from here would be, this would be the delivery. Um, and that's what we'll be covering tonight. So hopefully we'll, we'll run that back a, another time or two so you can see. And just watch the whole body. It's not, a lot of people get focused on the hips and they're kind of obsessed with the hips. When the, when the circle starts, it's the club's constantly moving. Everything... Uh, will move as one unit, so it's like it slows down, it sinks, it'll start to circle, but the club is always moving. Everything is constantly moving. There's where the delivery in that area, maybe a little before that, will start to take place. Now, from and we go into the delivery, we're going to talk about that more uh, a little bit longer because that's another. There's a little illusion you'll see as we start to deliver the club that, that amateurs get focused on, the pros don't. So, let's see, may have lost him here. This was Spieth, I think he was 16, this was in Dallas forever ago, but you'll see he'll start to sink at the top, collects the club, here's the circle. And like you saw in last week's webinar, that's what the sink and circle is, and you can train for that, and you certainly you'll, you'll be able to do it now. Um, <clears throat> and then from here, you'll see this, that's where the delivery would be. Okay, so tonight's lesson is going to be about the delivery. Um, so the delivery, you can, you can go into a lot of things. You're basically dealing where the club's releasing and, you know, you're dealing with shaft control as well as we talk about controlling the side of the shaft. Um, so I'm going to go face on for this. We're going to pull speed back here a little bit. 
So you'll see him face on again. I'm going to show the sinking circle. He's going to start to sink with his body. He will circle. And then from right there, that's where the delivery would start. And with really the highest level ball strikers, the delivery, most people think it's when the club is parallel with the ground in here. That's not, the delivery is really going to be in this area. So where you're going to deliver the club. Um, and if you can deliver, if you get this training, you get correct and kind of auto programmed in um, with the sink in the circle, um, what will happen is you can deliver it from a longer range out. You don't have to deliver the club way down here at the bottom. You can deliver it further away, which gives you more distal end speed, which just means bigger, a bigger arc, a wider arc in the downswing. As you can see, the shaft's moving away uh, to create not only more power, but more accuracy. You have more space. So, look at that real quick. So again, from right here, he's going to deliver. This is what we talk about, the side of the shaft, the middle. So right here, the side of the shaft that we're looking at, that's the, that's the part of the shaft that where the torque of the shaft is going to create and then how we use that to align itself back into you know, the grip alignment point. As you can see, he's using that side of the shaft to create space and it also squares the face without rotating the hands because again he's got full control of that okay um, and every player every even uh, with impact every player is going to look a little bit um, different as they're coming in some players will have a little more risk uh, with what they're doing with the wrist sometimes that's based on grip sometimes it's based on what they're doing with the body uh, another thing that I wanted two other things I wanted to talk about tonight on, on this on the delivery is the or major is you want to use the mass of the body um, and this is where probably the most important thing so as he's, he's in the delivery zone what I was talking about earlier where there's an illusion is really you're going to, he's only really going feeling going this way with his golf swing he's already created the circle so if you've got a circle built into your training what happens is um, if you've got the circle back this up it'll make more sense so when I get here and I start to create that circle, it's like you're starting a little tornado. So you, if you keep turning with your body, like I said in the last fall uh, video for the webinar, if you keep turning, what will happen is you'll outrun it. You'll spin completely out of it and you'll wipe the ball and you won't be very efficient and it just won't work. So after, he, uh, after that's over, really the only thing he feels after um, he's completed his backswing out of transition is he's just going forward um, with the mass of his body in the sweet spot. And that's going to be crucial so even though if you watch here you're going to see rotation he's only feeling forward I can assure you that okay what you're going to see is what amateurs will see in this in this video right here is they're going to they're going to look and they're going man he's really turning his hips out like this right here that's not what he's doing that's an effect of one collecting it in transition being efficient in transition slowing the club down letting it collect all the energy and then um, it's starting that circle again not by swing thought it's just built in naturally into his uh, transition and so after the circle has been completed he, as he moves his mass forward he, as he moves his mass forward not outrunning the, the sweet spot but as he moves his mass forward this way that's where you would see the rotation and the, the forward mass working together so they're working they're, you, they're, even though you would see rotation it's more of an illusion because that was created uh, in transition and coming out of transition and that'll make more sense you know uh, uh, um, some new players on tonight so the players that are new um, I think the, the players that have been on here for a while can explain that once I do the follow-up video it'll make a hell of a lot more sense than versus me just kind of showing but I, I think it's very important uh, to do the webinars like we do here because you can see the elite players and what they're doing and what I'm trying to explain even though they'll sometimes look a little different there's a few things that they do exactly the same and then when I do the follow-up video, I'll be in more detail. I will I'll demonstrate everything in very slow, uh, you know, motion and, and very and kind of inchworm my way through, so you can see mistakes the amateurs make uh, and what I'm really looking for for, for all the players. So, um, so that's Jordan Spieth. Uh, we're going to take a peek at Justin Rose. We're going to go back to the sink and circle. Here's the sink. Here's the circle. He's squared away from here. All that. And for the ones that saw the internal torque drill, this is what it does. It creates all the torque right here in the core and allows him not to spin out. From here, 
which is what we're what we're doing is we're going to have control of the side of the shaft which he already does this is where he would deliver from so all he's going to feel is four so we'll play this and there's four so mass is just moving forward through the shot and i think rose does it as good if not better than anybody on tour uh speak does it better with his irons than he does with his driver and um, and and then the next player we're going to be looking at will be uh, Henrik Stenson, which uh, is the same as Rose, just amazing with what he does here. So you'll see it again. It's going to sink with his body circle. He squared away. This is where he would deliver the club now. And this was going. All he's trying to do here is control the side of the shaft. Not, I'm, I'm not trying to put swing thoughts in his head because he's really probably just turning back and turning through or something something similar to that. You know, something very simple. But what's really going on here is. And when he goes to deliver, he's got full control of the side of the shaft where the torque is at, which controls the face. And he's using his mass forward and against the golf ball. And that goes back to the website when you see the mass. I think it's in stage two where it says uh, using mass and momentum. Uh, that's a great video. You, you, if you go to that video, you, you should watch the first two series, which is control and transition. Basically, there's three stages. There's going into transition. There's coming out of transition. And then there's um, using mass and momentum, and that's really what we're talking about tonight. And that's a you'll see, and you really can't go over those things too much because it, the one that has the best, the ones that come in at to transit control transition coming in and out, those are the ones that we're talking about. They're going to be the best players in the world. The ones that cannot control transition, the ones that you can see a lot of times college golfers, the ones that don't quite make it because their ball striking isn't good enough. That's a, probably the number one question I get. What's the difference? When, and a, when a player's just at that level and they can't break through, and it's most of the time, truthfully, it's ball striking. A lot of people think it's putting and all that, and I'm, it certainly can be. But, but most of the time, they just don't hit their irons close enough. When you go to the PGA Tour, the level that these players hit their irons, are, it's just unbelievable. And their dispersion on the tour, if you look, it's around 30 feet to, you know, for the best players. It's 30 to 32 feet. Um, it's not 10 feet like people think. It's not like that. So when you see somebody that's hitting at 40, 45 feet, they're at a major disadvantage for four days because of putting. Um, you're not going to make those long-range putts uh, unless you're Jordan Spieth. But again, his putting stats are, he's the best putter on the tour by far and away. Uh, and he, but where he hits his irons, he's such a good iron player he, he, that it fits right into his wheelhouse because he's always 15 to 25 feet. If he misses one, he's at 30 to 35 feet, 40 feet. He's not going to make that putt, odds are. But if he's in that 15-foot zone to kind of balance out his stats, you will see him make that. And that's what Tiger did and what so many players uh, really do And uh, on that level. And the players that don't make it, um, the ones from a ball striking standpoint, are because they don't control the transition uh, coming in, into transition, in the middle of transition, and, and then the delivery. Those are the most important things you can focus on as a player. Um, and because the first thing that happens, and this is not what we're talking about tonight, but I think it's really important, is when you come into transition and you don't get control of the shaft and the body, you don't develop control. What I mean by control is slowing the, you got to slow the speed down drastically in transition with the body and the club till they come together and form one unit. When that happens, then you can come out together of transition, and then you should have control of the shaft. Um, at that point, if you get those two things, it, it takes uh, a lot of work to hit a bad shot, I'll put it that way. So that's what every player should be focusing on. Now there's some things where when you come in and transition and, and come out if the face is doing certain things or whatever and the shaft might be doing certain we can deal with those individually. But in general as a whole, if you just get really good at, at the first stage and second stage of transition, the third a lot of times will take care of itself, which is what we're talking about tonight, which is mass and momentum uh, or the delivery. Um, but if you only have to work on the delivery and you've got the first two, it's a piece of cake. You're you're there. Uh, it's not wouldn't be the biggest. If the guys that have done the lessons with me when they come to, you know, the golf schools or they're they're training online individually and they're doing the live training sessions, um, they would tell you that most of our time, I'm telling them to slow down drastically and transition. Uh, allow the energy to collect. Do not come out of transition quick. That's going to be 99% of the lessons I do, and I won't. I'll never will ever ever teach somebody if they don't have anything else unless their transition is where I want. If they have transition where I want it in and out, we can go on to new things. But if the transition's too quick, it, I don't care what you're trying to work on. 
uh, grip, posture, setup, downswing, shaft plane, whatever, clip face rotation, any of that stuff, it's all going to be uh, a waste of time. So um, the best players in the world will tell you that when, uh, their best golf is when they feel, feel slow in transition, so it gives them more space on the downswing. Everything that they just said is what we're trying to do for, for our players, and everything's really built around. So um, I think that's just really important to obviously cover. And I'll, so if you when you're watching this, if you're not, you know, there's three different levels in our program. So if you're watching it and you're, uh, you know, and you're just the webinars and you're really taking care of your own golf swing, um, you've got to really pay attention when you watch your videos. You've got to watch if your club doesn't look like it's slowing down and your body doesn't look like when you go into transition it's slowing down. I can assure you it's not. It will look like it changed. It, you, you should see a visual change in speed. And so if you don't see it, you're going to have to exaggerate it more. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Usually counting in your head, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. So it looked like this. So if I was counting for rows, even though it's in slow motion. So here we go. Right here is where it starts. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three. And you can see it slows down almost to a pause. It does come to a stop. And then it's coming back out. And that gives him the space that he needs. So that's crucial to, to, to making anything like the sink and the circle work or, uh, or the delivery and all these things. So transition is something that if you just feel slow in transition and your, your training is correct, um, slow in transition is a great swing thought. So it's something if you feel slow in transition, you go out and play tomorrow and you say, I'm going to try to feel very, a lot slower, abnormally slow in my transition tomorrow. Literally 99% of the people in here are going to play, are going to play better. It's a great swing thought. Doesn't mean that you uh, circle correctly or uh, other things, but those are things that you're trying to do in your training. So it's totally different. They're not swing thoughts. Then your body will become. It will get. Uh, it will get more adapt to where it will sink and circle, and transition slows down. So then it becomes automatic. And it, it, the whole goal of this program is to become automatic and not, you know, really try to, you know. You know, simplify swing thoughts where it's basically turn back, turn through, or, or something in there where you got a couple. You know, it doesn't have to be that; it could be whatever you want. But if it's if it's all these complicated things, you got no chance. Those are things that should be done without without a golf ball. Uh, so, um, the last thing we'll talk about. So as we go to the delivery, do this again. Sink circle. Okay, so from here it's going to be the delivery. And what we're trying to do, and you've heard me talk about this before, uh, the side shaft does this, but the, it's, it's important that when you're working on the side shaft that the sweet spot and the mass of the body are moving together at the same rate of speed. Now that speed's too fast for you guys to see that, so I'm gonna slow this down to where you can see, see this a little bit better. So here's Henrik Stinson. So another one you'll again you can study any of the players you want. Most important player to study is going to, going to be yourself. But sink and circle, you'll see it with every player. So he's already made the sink and circle together. Here's where he's going to start to deliver the shaft. And if you watch here as I'm going forward, the sweet spot and the body are moving at the exact same rate of speed. Now if you measured it, it would not be. But what he's trying to do here is get everything is as he gets to out of transition is to get his body and club synced up exactly in time together that's in that's another good swing thought i know that i believe that's what justin rose actually thinks about is trying to sink his club with his uh, his or his club with his uh, body and it's a great swing thought and he also can train it in training so as you're watching the clubs releasing it his body your body's always going to be in front and i'll cover this again in some of the past webinars so you some people wonder why the body is out in front and not lined up exactly with the club because you have to remember the club is, is, is the closest thing to the target here. The body is the furthest thing away. And if you look at the rotation, it's got more work to do right here. And so that's one of the reasons why you don't want to try to superficially pull the club down and create a tremendous amount of wrist lag, not body lag, or, or full, full body lag. You don't want to try to uh, collapse the arms and run them back into you and create that fake lag is because what will happen is your arms will get so stuck far behind you you can't catch them up. So as you sink here and circle, these great ball strikers, and you can see it with them when you watch, as he'll start to 
move the side of the shaft more this way. Now it's not casting the tip. Now don't get excited here. He's not just casting the club. That's not what he's doing. But he's starting to gently move the club away from his from his right shoulder. But it's in connection with his body. It's not a cast where it's a you know a violent a violent cast and so forth. But it is a form. It's just gently moving. You'll start to see it's moving. You can see it moving away from his shoulder here. That's creating space so that it will shallow out the path. It keeps the spin off the ball like we always talk about. So you don't hit, uh, the ball doesn't run up over the face and, and, and create too much spin. And if you look, the body and sweet spot are in perfect time here. Now the body looks a little closer to the target here and it will be, all right? Um, some are a little bit more than others, but the reason why it's always going to be is again, it's, the club is the furthest thing away. So it's going to be behind the body. And you want it to be uh, slightly behind. You don't want it to be way behind because if it gets too far behind, like if you spin your hips here, and you leave your arms back, you'll get so the, you'll be so far behind. There's a disconnect, and that's called too much slack. And if you have slack in your swing, which he does not, he has zero. Um, if you have slack in your swing, uh, you have a good potential to blow your back out. But you'll always be, you know, for the most part, it'll be hard to control your your ball flight uh, and your consistency, your accuracy, because you're you know there's too much again slack or disconnect the arms from the body. So. That's really what I wanted to cover tonight. Um, it'll make more sense, as I always try to say, especially in these when I'm, we're doing working with like uh, this part of the uh, the season in winter, which is different than you know spring and summer. Um, it'll be a little harder sometimes in these webinars to really cover exactly what I'm trying to show you. But when we do the follow-up video, you know, this week, you'll see that it's uh, it'll make a lot more sense, and these will start to connect up, and uh, it'll make sense to you. If it, if it doesn't now. So uh, so now what we'll do is we'll open up for questions and um, we'll go from there. So whoever's got any questions, just feel free. If you have questions from past webinars, um, you're swinging this webinar, fire away. You can chat them in. I think I can get chat tonight. So, um, yep, I've got chat working. So you can, you can type them in or you can just Say what you got to say. Hey, Matt. Uh, you. I got a question for you. Can you hear me? Yeah, who's this? This is Todd. Hey, Todd. How's it going, man? Uh, Good. Would you, would you say that the pause of the top turn is probably pretty good for trying to train the slow down? I definitely, uh, I know what you're talking about when you feel it. You definitely can feel that connection when you slow down. Do you think that's one of the better drills? To, Train your body to do it without having um, your head. Yeah. So, and pause. The pause drill is a great way. And uh, so, the, there's. If you took all the instructors, I've been fortunate enough to coach some guys on the tour, on the PJ tour and the Champions tour, and and so by being out there, you get to see a lot of different instructors that you, we don't not not necessarily that we would believe all the same things about, you know, this and that. But if you took Every single instructor that's got credibility, and you put them in one room, and you ask them if you said, "What's what's one thing that you would say everybody out there would teach? What's the one thing? What's the one thing that you, not impact, not downswing, not how you would build the swing? All that's out of the equation. What's the one thing that you can agree on? And the only thing that you're never going to hear anybody that's got good credit or uh, credibility that has a you know pile of players that have won championships over and over and over." You'll never hear a coach ever say, I want my player coming in, out, coming into transition and out of transition very quickly. That's, the, the pause drill is the number one drill that every single instructor that I've been, I've never seen anybody teach a quick transition out there um, as a coach. So, I, and I've never seen a player working on trying to create a quick transition. What they're all trying to do is the pause drill is the most popular drill on the tour because it creates space and it gives players a time to feel whatever they're working on. Now, from there, that may change. That may be where you know a coach is teaching a different type of downswing or this or that and so forth. But one, the the base of what we're trying to do is if you make somebody, if you create a better transition, then by just slowing it down, just slow the transition down, uh, both in both when the club it gets into transition and comes out. If you can slow both of those down. I don't care what level of player they are, they're going to improve. And it's the most undertaught thing on the entire, in the entire golf teaching market. It's the most undertaught thing, and they all know it. I mean, the good ones and the great ones know it. 
but it's the most undertaught thing out there because we start looking at sometimes the bigger, you know, like we want players to do this and same with myself, this and that and all this. But if you take a lesson from me, I can assure you, if transition is not right, we're going to sit there all day until it is right. If you fix transition in 30 seconds or a minute, we can move, we can, I can teach you as fast as you can learn it. So if you can learn transition and slow that thing down to a complete stop, I can teach you faster than if you're just doing the same thing. And that goes for any instructor. Um, but so the transition speed, if you said, if you said, okay, you've got, we know timing trumps everything. We're not really talking, isolating timing tonight because you can have a fast transition and still have great timing if you're a high level um, player. But if you were, you wouldn't even be on here at this point. I can tell you, you'd already be a plus two or three. It, you would need, you would be a self-taught player and it'd be, you'd be good to go. So timing does trump everything and we'll get more into that as we get into spring. But if you want to improve timing without really working on it d directly, you're slowing down the transition, letting the body and club come to a complete stop or really close. Um, and then that'll allow the player to finally feel at one time that the body uh, can come back together through the ball somewhat together. Because um, um, video doesn't do it justice, like showing videos of a bad transition or whatever because the frames and stuff like that. But if I, if, I go, if I went to the driving range tomorrow, to a public driving range, and I sat out there, I can tell you if the odds are you're going to have, if you had 100 players hitting balls, 100 of them would have a poor transition. Now, if you got a, 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 a tour player that walked out there and you watched them, their swing would look slower, much slower than what you see with the amateurs that you're, hit, you're seeing. And that's why we talk about where a torque based swing versus a speed. You'll see a slower, much slower transition, much softer, heavier swing but obviously much more powerful and much more accurate and so obviously that comes from you know flexibility it comes from because they have great timing and all that with ball flight but it, they're 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 always been either taught or they made themselves create a slow transition the longest hitters have the slowest transition so if you look at like you know like a justin rose a, a, you know a, a bubba watson the slowest transition on the tour uh and then you look at like um you know, Kenny Perry, Roy McIlroy comes to a full pause. Uh, Tiger Woods back when he played early golf. Look at back when he was a 97 to 2000. Look at his transition. The clip com came to a complete stop. That doesn't mean you don't turn on your back swing, just lift your arms and stop and come through. I mean, you have to create torque and all that. But if, you, if you're doing that, you make your same back swing and create a stop in there, like this nice slow stop, it, uh, your, your club and your body will start to finally feel as one unit and then you get you're energized that's going to tell you it's time to come down and so again does it solve all the problems no because there's some individual things there that, that we probably have to be dealt with too but I, you, no doubt you're going to play better no doubt and and it's a good question because like I said all this is irrelevant if your transition is poor in my opinion Hey, what's up, Trevor? Hey, I uh, hope the uh, more veteran guys can bear with me. I'm pretty new, so um, I wonder if you maybe talk about following the transition lines, let's say in the first three zones or in a three-quarter swing. Is it going to be the same thing? Because I find that if I slow down too much, you kind of lose that feeling in the shaft, like you lose the pressure. So, yeah. Plus, it's starting to pull down with gravity as opposed to, you know, you Yeah, so what happens is, you're, I, I, you know, without seeing it and so forth, it's hard to say because everybody's feels are going to be a little bit different. But, and it could be that you're not turning at all. So zone one, you know, the, you wanna, the reason why we train those slow, like, so if you were hitting a chip shot on the golf course, I would not tell you to really create the slow down effect and all that. I might tell you to hit some decel shots or whatever. But the rhythm would probably be equal both sides. It would never be, you're never going to ever hear me talk about acceleration in short game, regardless. But the short game, there's a video on ball striking versus chipping. Um, and they're really different. The reason why we teach that float in zone one and then that kind of that soft, that, that soft float in zone two and zone three, it's to create feel and create a little bit, you're, you're building a little more timing in for the player. And you're also building a little more torque into the shaft by doing what we do with the side bending of the wrist, softening up the legs, not squatting, but slowing them down and sinking a little bit. That's not how I would necessarily, it's not how I would teach anybody on here how to hit a chip shot if you're trying to get up and down. That's called ball striking chipping. I think it's a good point because that's to teach you, like if you're on the range and you're trying to build your golf swing, which is a great way to do it, 
you work you know the zone ones twos and threes and you get that softness and that heaviness with your arms and that and the, the your club is more d cell it's more torque based um because you're trying to build a zone five you know that's what your goal is if you're just hitting the chip shot i might have you just do all arms and it would be pretty much like a pendulum one two um it would it would take uh, it wouldn't be a, like I said, an acceleration or anything like that. Um, if you're losing, if you don't feel like you have the energy, you probably don't. You're probably not turning back together correctly, or you're probably just using all arms or, or whatever it may be. And you have to look at your video to watch that. And you'll see videos as you go along that coach you through that. Like you know where I talk about, you need to use your right side and your backswing. Uh, zone one is primarily just wrist. Zone two is is the start of a golf swing. So you're using your arms back. You you uh, you'll start to side bend slowly, sit there for a little bit, and you'll feel the torque build, and then you come through softly. And then same thing. It goes longer back and wider back on zone three. There's the end of that's the float with the wrist. You sink down. You come through smoothly, um, never accelerating. Um, if you if you're too quick with your arms, which it very well could be, if you don't have the slow down with the arms, it could cause that. If you're if you're just swinging the arms back on zones two and three, um, arms only, it could do that. Versus turning your backside and you're keeping your club together in in, in sync with that, um, could do that. Um, but you should be trying to feel torque, and it's also not a squat. So when you when you when you watch these players from I'll, I'll pull up uh, Stinson down the line. And every, this is not a secret, every player does this, it's just that, um, so I'm going to put, let's see if I can do this here. There's not a player that doesn't do this on the tour. So, everybody see that line, I'll do it with a highlighter. So everybody can definitely agree that that's, that's where he's at pre-transition. So he's already dropped. That's again, it's sinking. It's not dropping. It's a horrible word. Same as squat. He's he's gradually sinking in that transition where he's underneath the line, and he's circling now. And every player does this. So same thing. If I go, let's see. So right in here, he's going to start to sink. There you go. There's the circle. He's underneath the line, and bam. So he drops. All these players drop, every single one of them. Even with the driver, they drop. Let me get this. I'll do it with the pin so you can see a smaller line. Well, you can see how much it actually is. Jordan Spieth. He's already started to drop from the line there. He's sinking, he's sinking. He's, he's still sinking. You see how much lower he is than that. So they talk, everybody talks about how Tiger drops so much. It, that, they all do. They, the only thing that Tiger doesn't do like he used to do is he doesn't create the space in his downswing like he used to do. He's dropped his whole career. He dropped 21 four majors in a row, and it wasn't a big deal then. And, it, and it's not now. Every player on the tour drops. Uh, you know, they sink. Uh, drop. They, if you look at it like this, it's a drop. But in, in all in reality, that's why we call it sink and circle and not squat and circle. So when you go here, you don't just drop in one frame. You don't just squat straight down. If you watch, it's, there's a series of movement. That's why it's a very slow, and, and he's in transition, very slow, slow, slow. But he's gradually sinking himself down. Look how low he is here. That's with the driver. So if you see, when amateurs see this, um, when they come and I show them what this feels like and so forth, they feel like they cannot hit the ball. Yet when I put them here, they hit it a thousand times better because their head is still on that line. They're standing straight up. So they're not connecting into the ground and, and, uh, and, and angling themselves to strike. They're, they're going vertical and they're going playing uphill golf versus you know downhill and level golf. So you can see here that that's where the power is at. Now you'll see as he hits, his head's moving around and all that, but his body's going forward. But it's still underneath the line. 
So that's where you're going to create power. So when you see when I'm training these zones like two and three or even one, you know, and I add that sinking in there, that's and it's a soft when you have you have to really use your your eyes when I'm when I'm doing this um, the zones one, two, and three. You have to use your eyes with what I'm doing, uh, and then try to get yours to look. Even though your swing will be different than mine, you should be trying to create that energy the same way I am. The softness, the slowness. And the way I do it, because one, I, I know how to do it, and uh, but it's also you'll have your own style. But for training, you want to train that really um, that sinking and the softness with the wrist and the shaft, so you build that torque. Now, if you only take the club back, so if I was here, you know, Jordan, all these players do a great job. If you watch, turning the even right here, he's already turned his right side, his right hip, his shoulder, and everything. His whole body is already turning on the backswing here. From club, his right hip's turned, his shoulders are turned. So a lot of people here, and that's a true zone. So that'd be like a zone uh, two right here, as his wrist would side bend. He's not going to come back down, but that'd be zone three right there. But that's why we do that width right there. Um, we create that width, but it's a, the right side has turned completely, uh, and there hasn't been a lot of rotation with the club. There's actually been zero with him, uh, but everything is turned away from the ball. So then from here, if he was coming back to doing what we're doing, he would just sink down slightly. He'd start to sink slowly. He'd allow a little bit of the wrist to side bend, just a little bitty bit, you know, very little. And then he would start to come back through the ball softly. So now you'll see that float that we talk about. Um, with every player, but you'll see it even right here. He's starting to sink and he's slowing everything down. Uh, then his wrist of side bend, that's all he's got. And then, and I haven't changed the, the frames. That's just how you can see how much he slowed down. Then the momentum would pick up, you know, through the ball here. But if you're having issues, you know, the, one of the main things is when you're doing this, if you can't feel, if you don't feel any torque in the side of the shaft and in your body, then you're not, you, then you don't feel any torque. And that means you don't, you're not doing it obviously correct and that's why you would want to train with your iPad reverse the camera or device similar uh, and you have to really watch yourself because if you're not what we talk about a lot on these webinars um, that will help, help you Trevor is feeling real our, our goal is for those two to be exactly the same thing because when you deal with professionals or higher level players they're feeling real or very close to being the same thing if not exactly when you watch an amateur when they re record their swing and you're telling them they're doing something, they, like 99% of the time they think they're not, and then when they see it, they can't believe that they actually are. So they're feeling the real are like polar opposite. And so it's very important in the first, you know, I'd say six months for everybody to really do a lot of video and get comfortable looking at your movements and, and adjusting those movements because if it looks the same in week one as it does in week two, um, then you're not exaggerating the feels enough to get feeling real to become the same thing because they should be um, identical. and But that does take time. It's just like going to martial arts, a martial arts class. You go in there and you know a, a black belt is going to have way more sense, feel, and awareness and intuition uh, in a sparring match if, they're in, it is the, if it's a good place you train than when somebody just comes off the street or just a novice white belt. And that's what we're dealing with here when you deal with like an 85 to an above shooter. Their feel and sensitivity and awareness is not near the level that uh, obviously the higher players are and so that's what this is all about is when you do these softness drills these d cell drills all those things are so you can have you have time to feel the things that you need to do to correct it um, but you'll have to use video to help you along as well and if you don't see anything changing then you just have to exaggerate more and you may get frustrated and say gosh i just i'm trying i don't see it it means just all it does is it means you have to just keep exaggerating. You'll learn if you exaggerate enough, then all of a sudden you'll see a change and you're going to go, wow, that felt horrible, but it looks perfect. And so that's how you learn. And so, all right, no problem, bud. Hey, Matt. Yo. Uh, this is Matt from Chicago. Hello, How Matt. You? How's it going? Good. You know, um, I know you don't talk much about takeaway. Sure. But encourage us to take um, a wide takeaway, you know, kind of get your hands away from your head towards as you, as you approach the top of the swing plate. As long, yeah, um, I think it's a good question. The takeaway, I think, is, 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 is important. Um, 
I think it's I think it's more important than as the club goes into its backswing because you know you're dealing with muscular limitations and you're dealing it's not a fair fight at that time. Some players are going to be better than others once the club's got three feet back. Now I, I do I, and I don't talk much about it and I probably will start to do a little bit more because I do believe in a good takeaway because when you're in a zone two and a zone three, if you're taking the club two feet to the outside you're going to be having a long it's going to be very hard to to hit a zone two or a zone um you know a zone three it's going to be very difficult now if a player's taking it way outside now it could be way outside way inside or it could be a lot of different ways but if you take it say way outside on a zone uh, five uh, you there's time to reroute the club drop it back in the slot and get it done so uh same thing if inside so if you're inside on a zone two it's very difficult to hit the ball uh, especially if you're trying to hit a high soft pitch shot down the road, but like if you're just trying to hit the ball, it's pretty difficult. Um, and so if you get to zone five and you take it, wide, you know zone four and five, there's time to recover. There's more time in a in a high level player. An amateur won't do it; they, they'll just come straight down. But a high level player can take it way outside or way inside and hit it solid because they know where the slot is at, both with their body and club, and they know they have all day. So they'll just adjust the club to work to where they want it, and then. You know, like a Ryan Moore, so to speak, or a Jim Fiorek, or whoever you would, a Raymond Floyd that took it way inside, Sam Snead, so forth. Um, they have plenty of time, um, and you can still do that in zone twos and threes. But it doesn't. It looks. It's, it is weird to see somebody like really have to adjust and so forth uh, like that. And it's just no need. So the way we build that uh, swing, and we'll have some new videos in the next month or so uh, that are kind of more updated. Um, to to what we're trying to do, and the takeaway would be one that would be in there. So I think it's a really good question. Uh, I'll put that in the video and show you um, uh, what I what I believe the takeaway should look like. Um, and um, I've done that before in some of the past webinars, but I don't have it on a like a I don't have a very good video, if any, that really covered that on the uh, private website. And I probably need to do that because. If you take it back correctly and you have a good float <clears throat> and uh, you know you control the side of the shaft coming through, if you take it back, it'll just be automatic. There is no, I mean, it, it really is. And so if some of the players have been to our golf schools, when they come in, they, when I tell them, like, when, they, when we hit chip shots at the golf school, you'd be, if you saw what I see every day, you would freak out. Or, or the guys from 20 yards out are pulling shots, you know, three and four out of 15, 20 because their baseline is so solid. Um, that's because that's, it's part of the takeaway. The, then when the baseline gets so solid, that takeaway is so solid, we, we're constantly controlling the side of the shaft. So if you've got control of the side of the shaft, the ball's gonna go exactly where you control the shaft at. So if your takeaway is really good, then that really is like a two and one. It's, it's like from 20 yards out, I mean, guys are dotting them up. And we're, you know, these are 15 handicaps sometimes we're dealing with and 10 handicaps. But that's very, very common, and that is because the takeaway so sh is right on point, and then we control the side of the shaft, and those are the two main things to be able to do that. Um, so I'll, do, I'll put that in the video about the takeaway so you can see, because I think it's good for everybody, because I do talk about the turn a lot, how the right side should turn, but I'll talk about how the shaft should look um, as it's going back, and it'll make, it, and it'll make more sense, hopefully. So it's a good question, and it's hard for me to explain it on here. I can show you, I'll show you a couple down the line, because I think down the line is the best, um, when you're looking at, most of the times when, I'm, when I look at the golf swing, I look at uh, face on, because it gives you more body and club and sequencing, and uh, you can tell more about the strike as it's coming through. But if you watch here uh, with, with Stinson, what I'm looking for, I don't really, it's not so much this, it's going to be that the, uh, the right side is going to be opening, uh, the right shoulder is going to be opening as well, like this, but then the shaft, the face of the club, if you look here, is hasn't rotated it hardly any. Uh, so the, the face, if you took it back, hasn't really opened up, so it hasn't. Um, he, he took his grip, the, the club back slightly inside. He's, he's on perf the perfect baseline right here, which will make sense when I do the follow-up. But his club hasn't, it hasn't rolled way open, which is real common. Or it hasn't went, you know, kind of way outside and then, you know, or vertical. You know, it's just literally turned with his body without manipulation going left or right or vertical or cocking the club. 
and that's really so this would be one that I would say um, is would be what you're going to see with what I teach so and it continues and so get this off here so when I go to keep continue to take it back right as soon as you go in here it's going I like it to go like this you know and you, I, you've seen videos where I talk about it should follow up the, the, the seam of the shirt should just kind of go up um, as the body continues to turn so the right hand and the lifeline go up and over the shoulder but the, you're dealing with some players going to have it over here like Graham McDowell's way over here you're going to have some guys like Kenny Perry pointing the club four fairways over to the right some are going to be very high like Bubba Watson Jim Fury you're going to start after you get past the takeaway you're going in you're going to be doing a lot of different things um, and it's even one of those things like Jim Furyk, his takeaway has improved night and day from where it used to be on the tour. And he used to be on the tour, it was literally his takeaway was straight outside, straight up. And now his takeaway for the first couple feet are really good. And then it's, you'll start to see the up and the loop and all that. Because, and so it's even something that Jim Furyk's worked on, and, you know, um, that, and has, has changed. So I do believe the takeaway... Um, has a there's a lot of merit in how you take the club back and it is another thing that a lot of the players on the tour will work on the backswing that they've already built all that they've had the same backswings for years and years and years and if they usually change that which is where you'll start to see them hit this major slump is when you start seeing them deal with this area because now you're dealing you're affecting the timing the sequencing and all that and that's where the, in the confidence does bad shots you lose that confidence whole different side of the game, it's over. And a good example of that is, you know, Tiger of recent, because injuries injuries will do it as well. You lose your confidence and your timing and all the same thing. So he had kind of had a two-for-one there. He was changing his golf swing, which, um, like, I, I'm in the, in the boat with a lot of people that didn't believe he needed to do that. I think he had it. Uh, I think he just needed to continue um, doing what he was doing. And, and then, he, then he had um, the, the worst thing that can possibly happen to you is, is these injuries, because... Um, I've dealt with that with players before, at that not at Tiger's level, but on the PGA Tour. And a player gets injured, it's not that they, it's not that they can't do what they did, like they can't swing the club like this anymore, or they can't do all this stuff. I mean, it's not, it has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with is something that is not that cannot be taught, and it can't be wheeled back in. Which is, if you play all these tournaments, you win seven times in one year. That's it. it, it you went. There's no. There is no swing thought for that. There is no position or this or that. So it's confidence, and it's something that it's impossible to teach. You just have to be doing it. And so what happens is these guys get an injury, and they sit out for a year. They start to, you know, they don't know if they have it anymore. It, can I be the same player I once was? All these doubts and fears creep back in, and you're dealing with a whole, it's more psychology than it is, way more than it is, you know, golf swing or can they putt or any of that stuff. It's doubts and fears, and that translates into bad golf shots when their swing looks really actually about the same. So uh, when somebody you see a player get injured, you know a thumb, uh, a wrist, or a, the back, and they have to sit out for three or four months. Look, Jason Duffner, yeah, the same thing happened to him. You know he's not even though he came back. Look, if you look at look what happened right after the injury, it was terrible. Um, and it's so injuries obviously can run a player's career or se certainly hold them back for several years um, but and then also working on trying to change your backswing to become something that you're not can do it so if um, takeaway is one of those things where you know you can show anybody about the takeaway and if it's if you're somewhere in the ballpark teaching it correctly you should be you should be good so if i can follow up on that Matt. sure so in that picture you have on the screen of Stenson, sure Mm -hmm. So he's got, he's got a, you know, call it a wide pendulum, mm -hmm. you know, the potential for this wide pendulum. Yo, yeah. Where I know myself, I was, I noticed my hands, you know, probably from the old days playing baseball, but my hands were kind of much closer to my head. And now I've been putting, you know, take, trying to push my hand out a little bit. And it feels like I've been getting a lot more, you know, umph on the ball. Yeah. So, I, I think um, with width, you got to be real careful. And I'll show you Jordan Spieth face on because you'll see... With Spieth is, a lot of people don't realize, he, everybody thinks you got to have a straight left arm and all this width and stuff. And if you watch, you'll collapse in this left arm. There's a lot of great players that do that, it's, especially as they get to the Champions Tour. So you can see there's a really big break here. Um, and, you know, that's supposedly, you know, a big no-no. But that's a huge break. Um, well, obviously, ball striking has no impact on the ball striking. 
So, but what he does have, he does have space up here, but he, but again, he's got a break in the elbow. He doesn't have this real, you know, straight elbow and all this stuff, and you don't really need one. Um, you, what you don't want to collapse your arms in, but what you don't want to do is try to push the club, and I've seen this quite a bit from players trying to do it. They'll try to get the club so high uh, out of their range that they lock up the energy in their whole body. Uh, and then they lose, you know, then you've got a whole new set of problems that clubs, you know, your club and body aren't working together. You lose a mass amount of power, even though you've got a wider arc. So if you're, if you're, if you can make, if you can get your arc a little wider and you don't lose the softness of your swing in, in the, the, you don't stiffen up to do it, which is what everybody does. They try to get the club way over here. Like, you know, you'll try to see somebody push the club way wide and keep it way out there, really up high. And they don't have the mobility to do it. And so... Uh, what happens is they'll lock the energy up. So I like players to be comfortable, but not collapse. I would want to see Jordan Spieth's arms right here, but I would not want to see him right here either. If he tried to get his arms up to here, there's a reason why he doesn't, because he knows this, what's going on here. He's seen it a million times on video. There's a reason why he doesn't have it up here, and the reason why is because it's out of his comfort zone. So he's really right in the middle. This would be no-go for Jordan, and this is a no-go for Jordan, so he's right in the middle. So, And that's where every player... if you, you the uh, reason why I don't, I, I'll talk about width. I, I'll just talk about downswing width more than I talk about backswing width. But when I talk about backswing width, I'll always say very, be very careful not to um, isolate width and stop the whole picture here. Because the anytime you're doing anything in the golf swing, it should be there should be respect of the 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 club and the body and their how they're working together. So that's that sequencing and flow and then striking, right? So um, what will happen is it's easy to, to work in training to try to stiffen this, you know, get this straight right here, and then all the focus is on this and not this and all this, which is the most important thing. And that's all I would tell you. And if you're having, I'm also going to tell you, if you're having good results with it, I'm not going to tell you not to do it because you probably are doing that in some form, but just make sure you keep that in mind that you're not, you don't keep pushing those boundaries to where you get it so wide and so uh, high that you're, uh, that then all of a sudden it'll break down. No problem. Well, there's a, let's see. Robert asked one on chat. Let me just read this real quick. I'll put the width part in there too for the video. Let me just see here. Let's see. Give me just a second, guys. Yeah, so um, this is, goes along with the takeaway and then uh, kind of the baseline plane. That's on, uh, if you remember, like the three essentials, I believe it was, on the private website. It'll talk about um, the planes that we talk about on the downswing. And they don't have to be exact, but it's just what we believe you have an advantage with. And uh, that's the baseline. So I'll cover the baseline um, on the video. It's basically um, how the hands work kind of in the backswing and through. Um, and... That'll be one. Let me just write it down. So that's Robert. And this one makes way more sense too. When I when you see the the table I use for the for the uh, um, for the baseline, you can see that um, although I'm, my body's turning to the right, my club's going the shaft's going back um, straight on the baseline, but the head would be inside now. That's going to be really hard to explain on here for, for players that haven't seen this before. But uh, it, it, will take, it won't take 10 seconds as soon as you see what I'm going to do on the video. And it's a great, so this is good. It covers the takeaway with Matt's question and then, uh, and then uh, uh, and Robert's question. Those will kind of go together. And um, so the baseline is both the takeaway and then what we call the, the baseline plane. We just put, pop it up here. Let's see here. Give me just a second. No, that's not a very straight line. Okay, so that's this line here basically just goes all and it's curving a little bit on me. So that's the baseline. It runs all the way and it's parallel to um, to uh, the ball here. So that's the baseline on the handle, and you'll see the one where I deal with the table, and you'll know why, because this is what we teach. 
So this right here, and you'll see, let me pop this off. So as I go back, as you look on the handle, this will all be in alignment. As he turns his ball, body back, it's like, you can see right there, he's laying it right on the table, that baseline. That's the baseline. Now when he comes back down, <clears throat> so right here, if you were in zone two, that's a wide, say you're starting about, you're going to start zone three. This is where you would start to side bend slowly and sink down into your legs here. Again, sink, not squat. And that would put the club head, as you'll see in the next couple frames, behind that line right here. That's it. That would be zone three. That's where you would start to uh, sink and then work the club back. Okay? So that's the, uh, the baseline. As you go back, we're going to go up to the top here. All right. So as you've seen in the videos, I talk about where the shaft and the seam of the shirt match up. You can see right here, there's the shaft and the seam of the shirt. They match up. That's the first. Now they don't have to. This is this is something that I believe the best ball strikers in the world. But they don't all. Some will flat, flatter than that. Some will have it a little more steep than that. But this is where you're going to see over the history of the game where they uh, the best in the world had it off this seam here. Halfway down the second plane, you're going to see, let me just a second, inside quadrant of the ball, this is a bad straight line, but you'd see it run right through the shaft, that's the, that's the second line, that's halfway down, the hands are centered to the body here, and the, 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 the hands would be directly in the center of the body here, with what we, would, you know, what I believe the best way to come down, now again, Plane, there's a lot of variability in the plane here, but this is what you should be working on with your iPad and in training for sure to get a feel for. Now the baseline, the third plane, and let me get all this stuff out of here. Right there. Try to do this again. This hasn't moved since we started it. So the club would be, I'm just about one frame off here, because it, it would be when the club's just literally right there that would be actually perfect the clubs just literally I don't know how much an inch up above the hands but it's above the hands and it's going to be slightly behind for a straight ball it can be slightly on the outside over here for a fade if it's way behind right here you're going to hit the ball over in those trees right there or over in these trees from hitting these pushes and big hooks because it's too big of an angle if the club head which a lot of amateurs will have the club head way too far over here so they would have, in this frame, they would have, instead of here, they would have the club head over here, way too far out, and then that's going to create a direct, um, you know, hit to the left, or it'll hit this big looping slice like this, because of the, the mass say on the ball, it's coming around like this. With this, uh, slightly behind the hands, as you see, as he, as he goes to deliver, the sweet spot is on plane, so it's on plane, with the ball, so it's auto. It's a, a, literally an automatic delivery, and it's, it's what he hit here. Perfect bullet. And you can see. So that's the baseline that we talk about. Again, this will make more sense sense to you, uh, especially the guys that are new on here, because uh, you're getting a lot of information. We're in the winter parts uh, training, so I'm way more technical in the winter. You'll see when I go into spring and summer, it'll change a lot. It becomes more about the mental game and your physical training, and um, um, some of the, we'll get into that later, but this part of the season is very technical because this is a time you can change your swing, not on a driving range, uh, this is not what I'm advocating, but at home without a golf ball, working on movement patterns and trying to build feel and awareness and sensitivity and, adjust, and adjusting. And then, so when you get into season, we start to let it go. Your swing, it's not about trying to swing all this stuff and, you know, we're doing, it's about, you know, literally creating this is not it, because you've trained it so much all of a sudden your body just naturally does it and you can let go and you you have good shots coming out um, of the barrel instead of looking up and you know and the balls in the trees left the balls in the trees right and so forth so this is a great time you have a uh, it's a great time to be in the program because you can really start to make your swing change now you have to you have to look at it on video you have to make feel and real become the same and and study but um, you know just from all the emails I get every single every single week the results are this is usually the time of year where people will start to uh, either play a little worse or the same because they're working on stuff but uh, you know I'm getting emails every week from players that are just striping the ball that are in their program so I know that they're you guys are doing a great job on on um, on listening and, and doing it but um, 
you'll see the program as it changes and comes through and uh, in, it'll change as we go into spring and in the summer and the fall so um, so I put the baseline on there for tomorrow any other questions I'm sorry yes I, I can barely hear you but I can hear you Yeah, I'm having a hard time, James. I can barely hear you, man. Uh, barely. I was just going to ask you about uh, spinning through the shot. Like, uh, I seem to get quite hard left on, on the down screen. Yes. And then it gets a bit like spinning. Okay. With the look. Like yeah, that's what what will happen is, um, I'll demonstrate that, obviously I'll demonstrate that tomorrow um, as well, but what happens is, and I know, you, obviously I've seen your swing, so I know it, and uh, as you get here, um, you make this move really well, and you actually have your shaft on the same plane, but what you do is, as you get here, and this, you probably already know it, but I'm going to just set some of the other guys that might not know it up is you get too much rotation here you continue the circle and so what happens is that lays the shaft back you flat in your swing so it gets the shaft under plane and it gets it too far away from your body so there's a disconnect you're, you're what we call outrunning the club and so when you start down um, you get that spin and that's what creates the, even though um, you got it somewhat on plane it's a little under plane but you get that mass a on the ball just from spinning too much and what's the, what's an illusion here is as you see uh, Henrik here it looks it looks like he's rotating right here which there um, he is rotating but he's not trying to he what's happened is because he's only going forward in his mind he, so he's just trying to sink the club and the body up together and move laterally so even right here so if I'm gonna stop it this is the feel and this is the feel you got to have in your in your in zones three four and five is just feel like that you just move this way lateral heel to heel like that so you would be with your body weight and you remember not you're not trying to slam this but you it would move only that way because remember <clears throat> let me uh, change this so I go back so when I started the circle here like this and it's already and it's already natural you already have that natural which is great but from here you have to feel the, the circle is not going to stop because you go forward so if you continue to circle and you don't go forward, you're going to spin out. So all you're trying to do, these great players are just trying to go forward. And you'll see rotation because it's already started. So it's like if you took a tornado and you had it spinning and then you made it go forward, it's not going to stop spinning. So what happens is you're seeing a combination of um, rotate, it's in biomechanics we call it rotational, um, um, uh, let's see, rotational pull with linear force. And so it's basically with... Uh, weight moving forward and rotation turning to um, create that like that somewhat if you will tornado feeling um, but most people if you try so when people see just the position of this only what happens is is they'll try to get to the top and they'll just try to slam their hips wide open and end up here and that's not how he got there is actually how he got here with his hips somewhat open on that was way back here in transition by creating plenty of time and space and getting the coordination that sink and circle he again he probably had the sink and circle built in his golf swing the day you know he was born i mean the odds are but it can be trained in because i've had so many players that i've trained to be able to do it without swing thoughts and the only success i've ever had by having somebody uh do this the sink and circle is without a golf without a golf ball as a swing thought it's a horrible and i think that's really important for people to notice so as you're doing this and you sink and circle if, and you have that move from here all you're trying to feel is move your body weight and your club forward because the rotation um, that they will start to blend together so if somebody was stuck in transition and you tell them to go forward and they have a steep shaft good luck they're gonna pop the ball up you're gonna you know create a dummy mark on the driver and it's gonna be horrible and that's why we create 
you want to create a really strong transition. That's why we always, I always preach about it. Because if you can create in and out of transition, this part delivery is fairly easy. Um, so I would just work on that with your wedge and work real soft shots like 50, you know, 30 to 50 yards and working on trying to get your weight, you're going from ankle to ankle. Uh, I'll try to draw another line here. So just working on your ankles going this way, not into your heels, not into your lead heel. You want to stay kind of on the balls of the feet like we're talking, just working laterally like that. And you'll be able to do it. Yes. And that one is really good, and that feels like good movement in that. When I go hit a shot fast, I can't come anywhere near that sort of pattern. Probably not exaggerating enough in your short shots. You know, you got to exaggerate it more and work more like I was showing like that video. Come back and watch this video and watch and watch what I do tomorrow. I'll put it on the video. And you're going to be, you're, if you try to sink and circle, if you're training sink and circle and you already have it, you could potentially be overdoing it, right? So you're going to try to, for you, you probably try to eliminate the circle and just work on sink and going lateral, all right? And, that, and that'll be, like I said, everybody's a little bit different. You know, that's for somebody that's already got it naturally. You never, you're never going to have to work on circle. Um, I know your golf yeah. swing, you have it, so. In the um, hands play about needing to, like, move faster if you, if you circle quicker? Uh, no, everything would be moving together. Um, you always want everything to move as one unit. Um, so everything, you know, in your training deceleration, that's one thing I would have you doing is working on decel. But, you know, don't try to do this and, you know, hit 50-yard shots with kind of hard acceleration because that's some of where it's coming from anyway. Have that softness in your swing and try to feel your ground and work foot to foot. So basically working ankle to ankle like I was showing, just, just literally for your swing, um, you're gonna feel like you're working, and, and everybody's, once they get to a certain level, will kind of feel like they're only going forward. They're not outrunning it, and I'll demonstrate that tomorrow, but you're just going forward, because if you do what we do uh, in our swing, you create you create the circle so early in the swing that, that then all you do is get the mass to move forward, and you've got like this tornado coming into the ball. Um, so I'll demonstrate, it'll make more sense to everybody when you see it. The, the top drill you uh, sent was good. That's that is the number good. one. So if you just, if you don't think of anything and you do the torque drill, all right, just forget everything I said tonight. Do that exactly like that kid did. Uh, you can call me back after you, I know you're already shooting, you know, you've been shooting around scratch anyway. Call me back after you shoot five under, because you will. So that tells you how important. Now, I don't give, I don't give the torque drill away. I want everybody, you got to be in the program three months. And then once you build your swing up to a certain level like these other guys, if you've been in the program three months, you're gonna want that torque drill. I'm not going to give it to anybody until you've been in the program three months, not because of money and all this crap. It's only because I want you to learn how to build feel sensitivity and awareness in your golf swing. As you've built that, then when you get to ready for it, the torque drill will play, it'll just, it's, it's better than icing on the cake. And so, James, just do the torque drill. If you got it, don't mess around. Just literally do that. It'll, it's not, uh, it's an eye and it really stops the spinning. Do it on the course. Do it on the range. I don't do it a lot on the range because I don't want you to get too many balls. Just do it. Just literally just do the, do it on the course. Go see what happens. And you come back in two weeks and let me know on the webinar. But make sure you're doing it. Make sure your video and make sure your foot's the right angle like we talked about and all that. Make sure it's exact. Don't kind of half-heartedly do it. Do it all the way like the drill like I was showing on with the kid. And I've never seen anybody to this day do that drill um, and not hit it. Uh, way better. So that's a big statement when you say that. So uh, there's somebody else asking a question. Has anybody else got any questions? Looks like we're all good to go. So, uh, Jane, let me put that. Uh
I'm still gonna I'm still gonna demonstrate it, James, for years, just because of the guys and the new guys in the program. Um, because I, and I think it's really good, and that's that's the way I would want you to do it if you didn't have the drill um, already built in. But you'll see as you do that just that internal torque drill, it's going to be uh, light years ahead of where where you've already got to. I mean, I know you you've changed your your handicap quite a bit and playing a whole hell of a lot better, but this will even take it to a new level under par for you and which we both know you're more than capable of that than doing that so um if that's if there's no more questions we're going to end it up for the night and we should have a lot of stuff here for the follow-up video that'll be good and uh, that'll be it guys i appreciate it and uh look forward to seeing you here in a couple weeks yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. yeah take care guys